the holiest man to ever walk in this world, that was how sage Dhanush was known. All over the small village of Ravapur, there was a great elation. The holy sage was visiting their village with his shishya. So the village folk was busy making preparations. The main street was festooned with balloons and banners, and flowers were laid out for the holy man to walk. No one in that old village was as excited as Nanda. A boy of 19, he was already tired of this materialistic world. He wanted to live without worry, like the sage did, in the forest far away from the civilized world. The sage visited every single house in the village. All of them greeted him with garlands and gifts, and many broke into tears when they saw him. They felt their unhappiness waning and their wounds mending. Such was the power of his presence. It was late in the evening that the sage came to Nanda's house. A great throng of people followed him and stood outside their porch. When he saw the sage, Nanda felt immense joy, and he fell prostrate before him. The sage blessed him and bury him stand. Nanda drew himself up and looked upon the sage. Golden was his skin, and long was his beard. Wisdom radiated about him and opened Nanda's eyes. I want to be your disciple, O Holy One, he said aloud. Murmurs arose behind him from his family. But the sage was silent, ever smiling. He looked at Nanda and saw that he was barely a man. You are too young, my son, he said, to test his determination. But I want to learn. Give me a chance, O oh wise sage, he said. And the sage laughed with joy, for he believed that he had found his fourth disciple. Then come with me, my son. From this day onwards, I am your guru. When Nanda's family heard the sage's words, they were shocked. It has been years since the sage took a disciple. Nanda's father ran to the porch and declared the good news to everyone. His mother was happy for him, but she cried, knowing that she would soon have to part with him. Nanda said his goodbyes and left the next morning. They went to the ashram on the bullock cart, which was heavily laden with all the gifts. The sage lived far away, in the middle of the jungle. There he had built three mud huts, one for him, and the others for his disciples. They reached the ashram at midday. The next day, while the disciples unloaded all the gifts, the sage brought some saffron clothes for Nanda to wear. He changed into it quickly and already felt like he was free from the shackles of the world. The sage looked at him and smiled. Nanda adjusted quickly to life in the ashram. He was living in a hut with one of the disciples, Hari, a middle-aged man. In the other hut resided Ramesh and Akash, the other disciples. Early in the morning, Hari would wake him up. They started the day with a lecture from their guru. Then Nanda went about fetching water and doing his designated chores. He learned a lot of new things, like spinning his own clothes, hunting, knowing which fruit was good to eat. There were lots of things to do, and he was never bored. Then one day, after a week or so, his guru called him for a special meeting in the evening. Nanda was thrilled. He entered the sage's hut and found the man in the middle of the prayer room. The light of a candle fell. On the sage's face, Nanda bowed low and then sat before him, legs crossed. Nanda was the sage's favorite pupil now. And it was not just because of his servile nature, but also because of his girlish looks. He had no beard or mustache, and his hair was long and dark, falling beyond his shoulders. Dark was his complexion. His body was petite, and his buttocks were ample, always making the sage look twice at it. What am I learning today, Guruji? The sage brought a solemn expression to his face. It isn't a lesson, Nanda, but an experiment. One I've never made any of my other pupils do. 
Nanda's eyes opened wide. You have reason to be happy. You are the only one I found worthy, his guru said. Very well. You know that we live in a patriarchal society, don't you, Nanda? Yes, Guruji. Good. So we live in a world where women are regarded as second-class citizens. We see them not with our eyes but with our lust. We see them as objects. Nanda nodded. So, how do we better understand what it is to be a woman? To be a mother, a sister, or a wife? I don't know, Guruji, Nanda answered. By becoming a woman, my dear Nanda, the sage smiled. I, I don't understand, Guruji, Nanda said, confused. From today, you'll be a woman, Nanda. You'll dress like a woman, walk like a woman, and talk like a woman. This is a great way to open your mind and broaden your horizons. You'll gain new insights. Nanda was silent. This was unexpected. He has never heard of such experiments being done by sages. Before. It is not easy, the sage continued. That's why I chose you. Are you up for it? Nanda sat in doubt for a while, but seeing the hope his teacher had in him, he accepted. Good. Henceforth, you'll be known as Nandini. Now go to Hari. I've talked to him about this. He'll see to it. Nanda took his leave and walked to his hut. He found Hari there waiting for him. The hut only had one room, and that's where they slept and studied. There were two windows on opposite sides which were now closed. And the light in the room was from a lantern hung from the ceiling. What is your name? asked Hari. Nandini, he replied. Good. Now take off your clothes and lie down. Nanda took off all his clothes and lied down on a mat. That was before him. He wasn't ashamed to be naked. For his guru had taught him that there was no shame in anything natural. For it was God's creation. Hari brought forth a razor and stood over him, looking at his naked body from head to toe. Then, kneeling, he began to shave Nanda's armpit. Why are you doing this? asked Nanda. Guruji said so. He said he doesn't like hairy women, he said, without taking his eyes off the blade. After the armpit, he brought the blade up to Nanda's face and shaved off the few strands of hair under his chin. Next, he shaved his legs and his crotch. Then, after all that, he asked him to turn around and lie on his belly. Nanda felt the cold blade between his crack, expertly shaving the hair around his boo asterisk 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 ole. Done. Now for your new clothes. Nanda stood up, his body red and itching from all the shaving. He didn't have that much hair to begin with, but now. He was as smooth as a baby. Hari now brought four pieces of saffron cloth with him. He tied a langoti around Nandu's crotch, tightly securing his P.S. with the first piece. The next piece of cloth was wrapped around his waist, covering his lower region to his ankles. The third piece was tied around his chest like a blouse, tying it at the back. After this, Hari looked at Nanda, and he felt a fire rising inside him. He was no longer a boy. But a dark radiant goddess. Nandini stood before him, her skin shining from the lantern light. Her belly was smooth and shapely, curving wide at the waist. Hari's CK hardened and formed a bulge in his lungi, and he was ashamed. Nanda was shocked when he saw it. What is this, Hari? asked Nanda. I'm sorry, said Hari. I haven't seen a woman in a while. And when I saw you, I just, he looked down, disappointed in himself. I'm weak. We're all weak here, except Guruji, of course. Nanda looked embarrassed, hearing Hari's admission. The fourth piece of cloth was a shawl, with which Hari covered Nanda's chest. But I'm not the weakest here, 
Hari continued, his P asterisk is still erect. There's a reason why I'm the one doing this. You've only been here for a short time, so you don't know. Know what? asked Nanda. Because there aren't any women here, the other disciples, Ramesh and Akash, they, well, they engage in home asterisk 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 UAL activities. Nanda gasped at that. He thought these disciples must be divine beings, free of L asterisk T and desires, but it was not so. They were only human, like everyone, like him. I saw them once in the forest. Having S asterisk X near the river, said Hari. Let me give you some advice. Stay away from Ramesh. He is a bull. If he finds you alone, he will try to take advantage of you. With that bit of advice, Nanda went to sleep, feeling somewhat uncomfortable in his new clothes and overwhelmed by his new identity. Nanda woke up the next morning and went to the Guru's hut with the other disciples. His Guru was astonished by his transformation and embraced him. The class began thus. But Hari was the only one who was listening to his Guru's teachings. Nanda was distracted by all the looks he was getting from Ramesh and Akash. One looked at him with L asterisk T, while the other with jealousy. When class was over, Ramesh waylaid Hari with questions. Did you bed him, Hari? I know you did. Please give me a chance to. He's making my CK hard. She's not a SL asterisk T, Hari. She's a woman. And you better see her that way. Otherwise, I'm telling Guruji. You're no fun. But I'm sure you fool asterisk Edim. You just want him all to yourself. From that day onwards, Hari always kept an eye on Nandini. He never let her go anywhere alone. Whenever she went to fetch water, or take a bath, or just a stroll in a jungle, Hari was always near. He noticed that she became more feminine day by day. It was her walk that changed first. Now her hips swung like a pendulum, moving almost in the full arc of a semicircle. Next to change was the voice. It still sounded like an exaggerated feminine voice, but now it had a woman's playful shyness. Hari sometimes found it hard to control his urge to take her in his arms and kiss her. But he wasn't the only one who fantasized about Nandini. Ramesh was obsessed with her. The first time he watched her bathe, he couldn't control himself. He wanted to have her then and there. If it wasn't for Hari, he would have got his wish. Akash was with him. Then, looking at Nandini with jealousy. Ramesh wanted her more than him. But that night, Akash got the best FK of his life. Ramesh had his way, with him in the night. They f asterisk ked in the thick of the jungle, away from the ears of their guru. Akash mo asterisk ed and screamed, hugging his lover, who had him pinned against a tree. Jackals howled, but that never stopped Ramesh. He was relentless. His libido fueled by his l asterisk t for Nandini. The symphony of their wild humping ended when Ramesh dumped a big load inside Akash's H asterisk A. Nandini was enjoying all the attention she was getting. It felt abnormal at first, but she quickly became used to it. She and Hari were close friends now, and he was so protective of her. He would praise her beauty and give her flowers, and she would wear it proudly in her long hair. She always had the scent of flowers now, and her eyebrows were darkened with charcoal. She grew her nails long, and designs were tattooed on her hands with mehandi. Nandini loved being a woman. Late in the night one day, her Guruji called her to his hut. What would happen now with Nanda, Nandini? Why did the Guru called for her late at night? To know more stay tuned for the coming part.